Um, this is the 19th annual Northern Virginia Game Worn Jersey Expo. Um, or heaven. We're in, call it heaven. We're, yeah, pretty much. Um, we're in Dulles, Virginia. Um, Hearn to Virginia. Just, uh, just shy of the, the Dulles Airport. And we've already made a lap around. And the idea here is we got to talk about some of the stuff that we're seeing because some of the stuff here we'll never see again. Oh my, it's incredible, and you can touch it all. Like, like you can touch it. It's not behind glass. And people have stories about these things, so hopefully we'll, we'll get these some along the way. Um, we'll start here because this is where we came in. This is what caught our, our attention first. Um, if you're into Stanley Cups in Detroit, which I've heard that they're, they're kind of into those things. Yeah, they have um, a bunch of those. Game one collection. Um, Detroit Red Wings. Not Stanley Cup, but what I like about these is they have the uh, Konstantinov bash here, which moved to the shoulder um, when they were in the 98 Stanley Cup. Oh, it must have been 98. Do we have any on this one? No. Yes. Oh, it is. Yes. Oh, fantastic. There we go. Uh, I, I enjoy it. Oh, that's awesome. You can see the golden cut, how much more they added. To make I actually wonder if there's more they added because he was always known for like how much more can I, my cheaters and stuff. Like I wonder if that's actually in there. That's before um, they changed the rule. Like the, the, yeah. the wrong hex doll shoulders. Some of the stuff with the, the Reebok cut and the damage to it, the stitching, the repairs. I mean, some people here are really into the repairs. And but this, this is our first time doing one of these, so we're finding that some people want them as is, some people want the repaired versions of them like they want. Like the, the level of this stuff. So this is a WHA, the Los Angeles Sharks jersey. And, and first of all, look how tiny it is. Like so this, this is mid seventies. This is like game worn. This, oh, this, yeah, these are all game. All the stuff here is game worn. So this is this is like I would say like I would play this at like a smaller medium today. Yeah, like players with pads in these things, like unbelievable. And I, the, the rack here. Oh my god, like. like First off, more WHA, which I don't know how much people care. The Chicago Cougars, they didn't wear white at home for most of this. They had, they were, no, it was a gold jersey and a white jersey. Correct. So this was, and again, look how, look at that stitching. Look at that chain stitching there. How great is that? Even if that head is deranged. But I mean, just unbelievable. Or, um... Carolina Hurricanes. Ooh, and a double or a triple patch? Uh, it's a triple patch. It is. No, it's, it's got, got the Glenn, uh, Glenn so Wesley. It, it, it's a Kovalenko, and it's autographed, and you have, you know, for the arena, the NHL 2000, and do you remember who this was? It might have been Glenn Wesley. That would make sense. If I'm not mistaken. I mean, just utterly incredible. Um, you know about this one. Don't you have one of these? I do have one of those. He's on the back. Con? Con. Rob Con. So, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Rob Con took the first face off for the Columbus Blue Jackets in the oh. franchise. I think he was either C O N N or K O N N. Um, you have an amazing collection. I, I can So you had a Bobby Hull out here earlier. <laughs> I couldn't believe that you took down a. Look, we, but that's like, a, that's like a small t-shirt size today. That's amazing to me. That a Hall of Fame wear the uh, body armor that they're wearing. <laughs> we just put the, we put the jersey on and win. Um, I'm, like, I'm amazed how different the quality is. Some of the stuff that's heat pressed versus... Well, these were restored recently. Really? Well, oh, people do rest. Think about the Quebec shirts. They all get <laughs> Right. Well, so yeah, they're all I falling apart. I had a dilemma. I said that... You know, in the condition they were in, they had no value. They don't have the same value as if it was all original. Why? What are you going to do? Right. Okay. Interesting. I feel this is so impressive. It, this is this is stunning to me. Like, look how tiny. That's what two inch numbers. On the base of the sleeve? But you take an ugly jersey as it is, and like, you give it this ugly spacing, you give it the ugliest color scheme. Like, I'm, I'm putting together one of these. Like, I have a blank and I'm putting it together piece by piece, and he, I wouldn't have known to do it but that small need, and that space. To, I was going to say, you need to, to make sure you're as close as possible. Oh, yeah. I'm probably going to have to reorder numbers because it's, it's tinier than even I thought. Um, and then, of course, everyone, everyone's to see. Is this a game more efficient? That's a Tommy Soderstrom. That's a goalie. That's a goalie game-worn fisherman. 
with some real. I've seen some. I've seen some wear. Unbelievable. But the fact that that's a goalie cut jersey. And still a massive name on it. Massive wavy name. And everyone wants to see this. See, that's a... Now, compared to... I I imagine it's the same time period-ish. That seems, for a goaltender, that seems much bigger. Yeah. I mean, not a ton, though. Especially in the sleeves. Like like you said, they're not wearing body. Okay. Take care. Or being stuck up against the post to figure out where a guy is behind him. Oh, I have a lot of space. Exactly. And, all right, here's the deal. This is, in my opinion, the best table at this thing. Uh, Okay, yeah, there's game worn jerseys from everywhere. But this collection is roller hockey. That's it. And they have, they have anything that you remember from mid '90s roller hockey. They have on this rack or on this table. But that's all they do. Uh, here, so. Of course, the household name. Ugly thirds. Ugly thirds. With there's three of us, we figured it out. So, look at what you did. Like, the 90s were all about screen printing jerseys all around together. Coho in line. CCM Roller Hockey International. Everything on here is RHI. And I think the gentleman that we were speaking to only has a few of them left to get to complete, like, the whole bunch. I remember when this came, that Brian Trottier played for this team. Uh, and they sold it at the... Uh, at the, there was a signing at the mall. We went to Century 3 Mall, which is no longer around. No, it's, but, well, it's still standing, but non-functional. Non-functioning. But let's let's talk to this guy about his collection so we can get over there. Because this is unbelievable. I open the door. I open the door. Have you been through the Anaheim Bullfrogs? Like some of these logos, outstanding, absolutely outstanding. Fayette, Fayette the Atlanta, Fire? Atlanta Fire. Atlanta Fire. South, South Carolina Fire. Oh, that's that's really why we have the episode. Really <laughs> so, so how'd you get started in this collection? Um, so this is actually weird. So roller hockey started the rise to fame in uh, the 90s. Yeah. And uh, I actually got started watching this in 93 and 94 when the league first started. It was called Roller Hockey International. Uh, by 97, I was going to a training camp and, you know, actually trying to be a part of the team and uh, ended up working for the team. Really? So, yeah, so it was kind of interesting. Like, you know, as one of the guys who was walking the mascot around, some people find seats, some people buy tickets, and, and it grew on me to the point where I'm, I'm actually, uh, I've been a GM for a professional hockey team for, for many, many years. I'm, I'm wow. incognito now in my, in my own little uh, nerdy kind of world, I guess. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I started collecting when they gave me an old shirt. They said, oh, this is from the previous year, and then worked for another year with another team. They said, here, here's, you know, everyone gets a jersey, and I was like, these are pretty cool. And then you start learning about other people that are in the business, and other people that are in the jersey collecting world, and didn't realize it was this vast of a, you know, a club, or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, yeah, I went from I, I went from buying a few and dealing around a few, to being the guy with over 500. And now I've got people that have seen these jerseys over the years, like uh, Vince, uh, and about four or five other collectors that have been in the world, and actually there's probably about four or five of us that own these type of jerseys. You've but, cornered this market. Yeah. Uh, well, I wouldn't say corner, but I mean, you know. <laughs> I'd say you've pretty yeah. much done it. <laughs> yeah. you, you have all of them. So, but the, but the cool thing about it is this is the world where ice hockey minor league players and guys without NHL contracts had a summer job from 93 to say, 99. And this was a great opportunity for them to make five or six hundred bucks a week. You live in a crazy city. Most of these teams played in the actual NHL arenas. So it was it was really cool. You know, my work every day was to go to what's the, what was the Continental Airlines Arena up in New Jersey where the Devils won some Stanley Cups. Yeah. So to be able to work in uh, in that kind of arena or actually get to skate in that kind of arena was, was really, really cool. So uh, 
Yeah, and over the years I've collected, uh, I, I couldn't tell you all the, all the weird stuff we've gotten uh, from jerseys to, you know, floor tiles. To, I saw that, know, autographed uh, floor tile. You know, I mean, back in the day, this is where, uh, what a lot of people don't realize. Uh, NHL companies like, uh, you know, Reebok is a, is, a, is a good one. Reebok did the uniforms for RHI in 1996. They didn't work in the NHL until the early 2000s. Oh. So to, to think about their original hockey stuff got their was in right. roller hockey. Nice. So roller hockey did not have overtime. They went right to a shootout. Where did the NHL get their shootout idea from? Oh. Roller hockey. They tested it out in the ECHL, worked it into the American League, and eventually it was in the NHL. Roller hockey's played four on four. NHL overtime was originally switched to a four on four format. Yeah. Now they have it three on two. Well, all those, I'm sorry, three on three rather. Um, but when they have to go down to a three on two scenario, they can't. They have to go up to four on three. Again, those were all roller hockey rules. That was all developed in the 90s in this league. And like I said, a lot of these guys are all. Uh, so So here's an interesting story for you. Rob Laurie played in this league for a very long time. This is one of the all star sweaters. And uh, Robbie Laurie was, uh, he was involved. Uh, he was actually, uh, if you're familiar, you're familiar with the movie Sudden Death, oh, yeah. oh, God, yeah. Rob Laurie was the stunt goal for that movie. He was playing in Johnstown at the time. He filmed in Pittsburgh. Uh, Robbie was playing that year. So that'll give you a little background on him. He played the minors for a number of years. Amazing goaltender. Played in roller hockey over every summer. Played for the double IHF world inline team for a number of years. And then he eventually retired. He was you know, working a, a regular job. And he was out in California working for what's now Hockey Monkey, Goalie Monkey. And uh, they happened to need an emergency goaltender. So he's been an emergency goaltender in the NHL for both Minnesota and Vancouver. That's fantastic. <laughs> so he's been on TV as an e-bug for, for the NHL, and he's got he's got some wild stories behind him. Weren't you an extra in the sudden death movie? I, I was there at the film. Oh, I was, yeah, a, I was yeah. a little kid up in the stands. Yeah, one yeah. of my buddies was one of the referees, and uh, Robbie was one of the goalies. That's and, so uh, cool. So, so when you talk about all this uh, all this fun stuff uh, that we've done over the years with the, with the sport of roller hockey and all these different leagues, it's, it's just amazing. So you talk about the history, you talk about everything that's going on, and, and it's a blast. And this is my, this is my alternate... Ego. <laughs> so last question for you. Would you ever or have you crossed over into pro beach hockey, which is roller so, hockey -ish. So here you go. I worked for V Formation, which was the official skate of pro beach hockey, and I was actually out there the first year. So, yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool working for the skate company, and, uh, yeah, that was... Um, it was interesting. It was you know, a wild time. Uh, no salsa yeah. jersey yet? <laughs> uh, actually, that was the team I skated the game with. No, so, really? So I have that shirt in my collection. Excellent. So. And then... Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, go, go I, figure, I, right? You didn't expect that good of an answer, did you? I did not, no. <laughs> no, no, no. But, but, like, this is the most mid-90s look yeah. in, in table in here. Yeah. There was a brand, and we always talk about it. Like you, you screen print anything using a computer because that's what was revolutionary. Yeah, that's, that's what they did. The sublimation was amazing, uh, and it first got started in the 90s, and now look where it's taken in hockey uniforms. I mean, like, people laughed at the, the Fisherman Islanders, you know, you know, go back into the 90s and the early millennium and, and, and some of these designs, but this was, you know, like a version of minor league baseball. I mean, the, these, this is where all those weird looks came from. Yep. I mean, it was all 90s roller hockey. And now we wax poetic about when we yeah. want a throwback. We yeah. want that Fisherman back in, in Yeah, Long exactly. Island. Everybody's into the retro reverse. Everyone into those right. uh, the weird colors or, or try something different or alternative and uh, it's great it's great for you know and as a hockey GM it's, like, it's great for team sales obviously I was going to yeah. say it's a good money maker <laughs> we saw that you know so I, I mean it's great but I mean when you look about collecting having so many more uniforms gives so many more people the opportunity you know even though it overly devalues uh, a little bit of everything but I mean it makes things a little more affordable yeah. for everybody too so but, uh, but yeah it's a blast and this is uh, this has been a like I said, this has been a fun time, and uh, you know, it's like I said, this is my alter ego. So hockey, we won't hockey, tell anybody. Uh, yeah, hockey, hockey GM <laughs> by day and and jersey collector by night. So. Excellent. Thank you so much. So for cool. Sharing. Thank Pleasure, you so guys. much. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, no, you good. Cut it off. All right. I know as a Penguins fan, this is, should be foreign territory for me, but like, you, like just having this many of the same jersey, you think, oh, what's the difference? In? But you look closely. Just get in. Can I be like that guy in the mirror? Get in here. That, like you look at the stitching of this versus look at the difference in fabrics. Like we're talking the differences in airnet. And here we have Doreen, so it's the older one. And there's ones where we go from one color to two colors. You see a bunch of these. Here's the two color version. Here's the one color version. 
older ones where look how high this name is compared. I'm excited. I'm sorry. Apparently I'm loud. No, I'm not saying you're loud. I'm saying slow down. Your arms are causing the focus to get out of focus. <laughs> that uh, when you can see the older Doreen and you can see how deep the stitching is. But look at the damage on Dale Hunter. I mean, how clearly this guy has been around quite a bit. Um, the little details is where this stuff matters most because most of these guys have these all photo matched to exactly what games they can identify. Yes, it was worn. It was worn at this time from this game to this game. Um, that's absolutely amazing. The rack of caps jerseys. But if you want to get in here, Phil, and just kind of follow it along here, most people, most collectors only know what we get off of Adidas' website or Fanatics. Um, but what you have here are Made in Canada authentic jerseys. So a Made in Canada, the things that you notice the most about a Made in Canada, in this instance Adidas, the dimples. If you have an authentic, it's probably made in uh, Indonesia, in Indo-authentic. But for Adidas, uh, what they did was they make their on-ice official jerseys uh, in Canada, in Quebec. So the dimples, and just fill them right down the line. The dimples here are what's going to set your Adidas, quote-unquote authentic, from the Made in Canada authentic on-ice jersey. Like the dimples are the selling point for Adidas. And uh, for me, I mean, it makes all the difference in a jersey like this. Like you have your caps there, but the dimples here, something about them. It's unfortunate how things end. Oh, the household name Hooter Sportswear. Yes. Hooter Sportswear. <laughs> yes. Mac hockey is now the, the Atlanta, uh, Atlantic hockey. Right. And there was a name. Look, look at the logo down at the bottom. Uh, the early, early 2000s. Excellent. It's actually, in early 2000s. So I'm over here because of just how ridiculous some of these are. I mean, not well, ridiculous in that, like, I mean, how great is this? That Amherst jersey. Stall and Dean, though. Yeah. We're Stall and Dean before they were just throwbacks. Um, but I, I leaf through this. Of course, you see your, your Wales Conference All-Stars, your Campbell Conference All-Stars, your Michigan Stags of the WH. Every WH jersey I see is ridiculous. I was attracted to this Houston Arrows one, and I looked on the back. Oh my goodness. That's, I mean, so they, they, he played with Mark and Marty Howe, his two kids, and they put the full name on all the jerseys. And I just realized Gordy was an A. And Gordy Howe's not your captain. Like, oh, Who is the captain? I, That's I, a million dollar question. And he wore a 52 and a Rawling. Like, but like the guy at the other table says, like, they're not wearing pads, they're just going out there and doing it. Yeah. Put your skates on, have a cigarette in between periods. Like, Different time, though. Absolutely different time. You have your, your Baltimore Skipjacks, which how, how great is that of a look? Um, I was, we were celebrating just now over Portland Pirates. Like, that's a, that's a pirate. For early, for early 2000s, maybe late 90s, that's a good look. That's a good look. I just like, there's so much like, every jersey that we talk about, but like, Heaven. This is what heaven is. 